que ver, chicas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Herkese merhaba. <laughs> Herkese merhaba. This afternoon we are together with Mr. Diego Perez Gomar, Consul General of Uruguay in Istanbul. I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Perez, Mr. Consul General, uh, on behalf of Ankara University for participating in our international webinar series. Thanks to you, Professor Kutru. Uh, dear Professor and dear University of Ankara, you can be sure that the pleasure is all mine. I am very honored, uh, very pleased and genuinely happy to have the opportunity uh, to be here with you, to share this moment and to share some information about my country, uh, about the challenges uh, that my country pass uh, through all this very heavy period of time and crisis for the pandemic. And of course, about the bilateral relations between Uruguay and Turkey. Many thanks uh, to the University of Ankara to, for hosting this uh, event and for you, Professor, for leading and moderating this uh, webinar. I am uh, also want to extend my gratitude for uh, uh, the audience and the colleagues and friends that uh, are also connected from Uruguay to this webinar today. Uh, and of course, to my dear staff, here in the consulate that is here supporting me as always. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. The pleasure is ours, Mr. Consul General. And uh, in fact, you're the first Consul General of Uruguay. You're the first accredited diplomat to Turkey. So uh, would you please, as, as the first question, or the first thing I would like to ask you is about you is about you and your mission in Turkey. Could you please be so kind to introduce yourself to the participants of our webinar and say a few words about your feelings in, in Turkey? Well, uh, as, you, as you said, uh, my name is Diego Perez Gomar. I am a, a diplomat and part of the foreign services of Uruguay since 2010. And uh, now I am the Consul General of Uruguay in Istanbul since February. I entered uh, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, 10 years ago as, uh, as a third secretary. My first experience was in uh, New Delhi, just for a training for a few months, and, uh, and a first active practice. But my first formal position was in our embassy in uh, Saudi Arabia as the, head of, uh, the deputy head of mission and consul. After three years there, and for the next three years, the following three years, I was transferred to the embassy of Uruguay in Paris as the attaché cultural. And uh, I was in charge also on the economic and commercial uh, affairs. Uh, in 2019, uh, I had also the opportunity to go to our embassy in Ethiopia for almost one year as a deputy head of mission. Uh, and I received, uh, after the honor from my ministry, to be nominated as the Consul General of Uruguay in Istanbul, a duty that is my uh, first position as a chief of mission. So. to the Carnival of, of Brazil, but it's a mixture also from uh, many contributions from 
the African uh, continent. Uh, on the other hand, let me tell you that I used to say that uh, Uruguay has many, many ambassadors and representatives all around the world. Of course, the ambassadors of career, my dear colleagues, that uh, through their official missions and their hard work, try to project our country to the world. But it's also true that the image of Uruguay itself is a very known and very consolidated resource created from and thanks uh, the Uruguayan projection and its history, uh, uh, his history of a very respectful and serious country compromise to the international legality framework to the international law, to the international community uh, issues, to the human rights, to the developing of the countries, uh, to the world poverty, uh, to its commitment to the democracy, freedom, and sovereignty of the country. Uh, this is also a brand of Uruguay. And uh, last um, but not least, uh, the football, like you say, the football itself is a brand, uh, it's, a, it's a huge, uh, and, and, and a, it's like a badge, you know, uh, that uh, was able to put the name of our country all around the world. Being such a small country with a small population, like I say, uh, maybe we are the country with the highest number of professional uh, football players with very high level as a football players. Football is, is part of our, our identity. Let me give you some idea uh, to, to be very, to clarify this, this, uh, this point of view. In a typical Sunday in Montevideo, in Uruguay, uh, families and friends used to meet, used to, to go together to some place, house, park, or, or some meeting places, and uh, to eat the asado, the, 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 this, this kind of barbecue that is very particular in Uruguay because it's the best and high quality beef you can, you can ever find in the world, and uh, watch and assist one football uh, game. So this is a very typical Sunday in, in, in Uruguay that shows how football is inside our identity and our quotidianity uh, being part of family and social, social dynamic in Uruguay, you know? So uh, this, is, this is great. I, I miss a lot this, this kind of meeting with, uh, with friends, but Muslera promised me to invite me to his place to, to, to make a very good barbecue very soon, inshallah, I hope so. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> and uh, other, 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 other uh, cultural element, professor, that has part of our identity and uh, is, is of course the tango. It's of course the tango. Uh, tango was declared uh, by UNESCO uh, in September, if I don't remember wrong, in September 2009, was declared uh, intangible. Uh, cultural heritage for humanity. So uh, this is very important also to put the name uh, and to, to make known the tango around the world, a beautiful music and, and, uh, and dance uh, practice. No? This uh, music which uh, emerged uh, in the late uh, 19th century uh, the suburbs of Montevideo and Buenos Aires has, has come a, a very, very, very long way. Uh, in reality, tango is a, is a musical and a dance practice. Uh, it's a style truly originated as a Rio, Rio de la Plata River Plate uh, product. And the son is the son of uh, crossbreeding, uh, rural semi-urban semi environment and in communities of European uh, immigrants 
and the Afro uh, community, and in the lower class uh, located in marginal neighborhoods, at least in the beginning. And no, no many, many people knows this, uh, know these origins of, of, of tango. And it's important to, to say that also. Uh, tango is in, in depth uh, to multi-ethnic uh, contributions. Thanks to our colonial uh, past, indigenous, African, crowd, and the subsequent uh, immigration contribution. So, uh, it's very interesting that tango, in the language of slaves coming from Guinea, uh, Southern Sudan, uh, Congo, Angola, means meeting place. And this is what tango is. It's, it's, a, it's a excuse for meeting, it's a excuse for enjoying life, it's a excuse for being together, and of course it's a very romantic dance uh, uh, for, for uh, in love couple. So uh, it's, it's, this is also a, a very, very unique characteristic of, of tango. It's a very, very sensual and romantic uh, dance. Uh, the greatest exponent of tango uh, during the so-called um, golden age of tango 40s, more or less, was Carlos Gardel. Uh, that was a singer and songwriter and uh, also a film actor. He is the best known male representative of tango uh, around the world. Uh, there is a fight there with my brothers, uh, my Argentinian brothers, and even with French. Uh, with France, uh, we fight a lot about the place of Bern, uh, the place uh, in which uh, um, Carlos Gardel born. For, of course, uh, the hypothesis, the Uruguayan hypothesis, uh, Carlos Gardel was born in Tacuarembó. Uh, the countryside of, uh, of Uruguay, more or less in uh, 1883, because it's not clear the, the, the exactly year. And uh, for French people, uh, Gardel is born in Toulouse, and for Argentinians, of course, is born in Buenos Aires. But there is in a where, where was he born after all? Of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's in three parts, in three uh, periods of time. He maybe we should we should ask this to the uh, ambassador of Argentina. In a couple of weeks, he will be with us too. My best regard for my friend and uh, ambassador of Argentina that uh, we talked uh, the other day on phone. He's a, he's an amazing friend, very, very good. Uh, he's a great person. Incredible colleague, of course. But th there is this fight, you know, but there is an una unanimity that, uh, of, of course, uh, Carlos Gardel did his career and uh, became an, an, a national, uh, Argentine national uh, in 20s. And uh, he unfortunately did in a, uh, plane crash in uh, Bogota, Colombia in uh, uh, 1935. So uh, he was great and uh, like uh, many, many times happen, uh, the greatest uh, have a very small career and successful time. Uh, but uh, he was, he was amazing, he was amazing. Exactly. And finally, finally, uh, Uruguay is proud also to have so many famous and well-known artists are around the world uh, as an international reference personalities that made their successful not only in Uruguay but also uh, in uh, also in in other countries. You know, uh, so uh, the successful. Maybe sometimes strength came from abroad and not from Uruguay. Uruguay, after they got this uh, successful, uh, took them and say, these personalities and these fam famous people are, are, are mine. No? But uh, 
for healing, for, for giving you some examples and some, some names uh, as famous, famous uh, writers, I can list uh, Jose Enrique Rodó, Juana de Barburu, Felix Bert Hernandez, uh, Mario Benedetti, that is very known in the world, and of course, uh, of course, uh, Eduardo Galeano. Eduardo Galeano, that uh, made me go to, to part of your, of your question. Uh, one of the best representatives uh, of Uruguay literature, uh, his masterpiece called the, the, the Open Banks of Latin America, published in the, uh, 71, in which the author, the author took uh, the history of Latin America and its victimhood globally from European civilizations and uh, of America, no? And uh, to contemporary also Latin America's uh, colonization, arguing uh, with chronicles and uh, very hard narratives about the constant looting of the region's uh, natural resources by the colonial empires and the imperialist states. The work uh, even received an honorable mention from the Casa de las Americas Prize. Mm -hmm. uh, as we say, you, Professor, uh, gave, uh, gave us the gift to translate this opera in, in Turkish. So, Thanks once again. And uh, it's a very hard work. It's not, it's not an easy lecture. It's not, uh, it's not easy reading because you have to be very analyzed uh, and you have to, to take care of every word there. Uh, it's very critical, of course, in, in his work. Uh, and uh, it's based on the Latin American uh, left culture, for saying in, in some way, and it's what it was even prohibited by military dicta dictatorship. Uh, as you may know, this is uh, very good to say also that uh, not so many people know that former Venezuelan president uh, Hugo Chavez. Uh, gave the book as a gift to the American president, Barack Obama, uh, at the five uh, summit of the Americas in 2009. This action, no need explanation, and uh, about the meaning and the purpose followed with uh, this action. No? It was very clear what uh, uh, former Venezuelan president wanted to say to Barack Obama, no? Exactly. I, I remember that instance <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, it was a very important uh, moment. I, I remember him handing him over the book. Yeah, yeah. And, and all social media, medias and medias around the world put this as a main notice of the day, no? Exactly. Yeah, May he rest in peace. The day because what the, the, the meaning behind the action was stronger than, than the action itself. Exactly. It was like, take the book, read it, and see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and understand. <laughs> exactly. Well, my fourth question is going to be about the most important event of this year. It's not a positive event, but uh, nothing to do. Could you please give me some information, give us all the audience from all around the world? Because I know people from Peru, a great friend of mine from Peru is watching, the former ambassador of Good. Peru in Turkey is watching too, your friends in Uruguay, all around the world. Would you please give us some information on the difficulties of COVID-19 pandemic in your country and the measures taken? Yeah, with pleasure, uh, Professor. Uh, professor, in, in, in Uruguay, you know, the situation was not so bad. Uh, and the government uh, immediately took measures to control the pandemic. And, uh, it's uh, health, social, and economic consequences. 
So the three, the, the, the three main aspects of the pandemic. Uh, the numbers shows uh, very well the, the successful uh, management of Uruguay during this uh, pandemic. The total numbers in Uruguay uh, of infected people team now is around 886 uh, persons, 90% uh, recovered already and uh, only 25 more or less persons dead. Uh, so we can say that the, 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 the impact in terms of health was not so, so bad. But on the other, on the other hand, uh, being a small country, a uh, small economy that depends very much on what happens in the rest of the world and in the rest of the main partners, of course, the economical, the economical consequences didn't, didn't take so much uh, to appear. Uh, our economy is very open, very, very open, and depends on international trade and uh, our exportations. In consequence, the pandemic affected very, very much uh, one of the one main resource uh, and productive sectors. Uh, as in many other countries, many small uh, companies had to close because uh, they couldn't resist uh, so many months without any, any income. Around 50% of the productive sectors uh, transferred their employees to the uh, temporary unemployment insurance uh, system, impacting also this system. Uh, that got a very, very, very hard and very, very great shock. And uh, maybe the two, the two, the two of the most affected sectors maybe are in uh, 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 tourism and export sector, but also uh, investment that is very important uh, for a country as Uruguay decrease a lot in, in this uh, last month. And also, not, not less important, the bilateral negotiation and multilateral commercial negotiation were absolutely blocked uh, in this period of time and are still waiting the time to be restarted. Uh, difficult, very, very difficult time for, for all of us, for all of us. I see. Well, the, the next question uh, was going to be about the fight against the pandemic in terms of medications and treatment uh, applied in your country. Would you like to say something on that too? Yes, of course. The, the healthcare system in Uruguay works in a very good way. Uh, uh, we, we have a, a, a solidarity system called FONASA, in which all the active population workers and uh, independent, independent workers, dependent workers and unemployed uh, uh, have the complete access to the healthcare system in Uruguay. It's a very sol solidary system. So uh, regarding COVID, as I said before, the government immediately took measures uh, reserve uh, 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 huge areas in the hospital for sick people, uh, uh, create a domiciliary uh, attention system to control visits in hospital, anticipating uh, vaccination for flu also. Uh, the system didn't collapse. The system in Uruguay was capable to assist uh, anyone and to take care of uh, every case. Govern, government took uh, measures and care in the three areas, I say, uh, in prevention, assistance during the pandemic and to, to the infected people, and control of the health, social, and economical consequences. So any special treatment or any special me medicine that we already know and uh, uh, was a normal treatment uh, like in other countries. Exactly. Well, it's, it's very good to know this. It's, uh, we're happy to hear this. 
the, if the system does not, did not collapse, it's good enough, I see. Uh, as far as I can see, I'm, I'm trying to follow the countries in Latin America lately. It's, and it's, if, the, it, if the system works, it's, it's good enough. It's one of the good things for being a small country and have a, uh, has a, uh, have a, a small population, you know? So everything is more controlled. Thank you. The next question was about some specific sectors and how much they have suffered during this pandemic. I had noted uh, tourism, agriculture. You are a country of agriculture uh, by some uh, ways, pharmaceutical industry, etc. Would you like to give us some more information? Actually, you have uh, just mentioned some of them, but maybe you could provide us some no, more no, no. information. Of course, of course. They, like, they, can, they, you, can you export as much meat as you could before the pandemic? <laughs> no, 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 not at all, not at all. Uh, Uruguay is taking care of this and is taking very seriously the negotiations to go further, to, to be able to go on in the, in, in the exportations because, because many, many products and many, many things are still blocked and uh, we don't know yet if could be worse consequences in the future and uh, so we have to take uh, the control of, of the possibilities and the, the, the worse or more negative scenario in the future. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, yes, particularly a strong uh, the pandemic was uh, in tourism and service sector. Uh, regarding the general measures to combat the consequences of the virus in the service and tourism sector and also export area, the government, the government create a line uh, of special credits, loans, acceleration of taxes uh, where possible, of course, and extension of the maturity of tax obligation, especially from the point of view uh, especially from the point of view of uh, 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 exportation, uh, was 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 very heavy. Was very heavy. But uh, let let me see one thing. Okay, no, because was blocked the the web. It's okay. We can continue. We can continue. Uh, so. Um, the trade balance, for instance, in, in, in January and May, uh, was in deficit, of course. The, the, the period of the, both imports and exports uh, decreased a lot on investment, like I said before. Uh, China, for instance, that is originally and normally our uh, first uh, partner, uh, the Uruguayan export to, to China uh, registered at uh, 30, 30 something percent uh, drop. That is uh, too much. Uh, there were products that were impossible to sell uh, because uh, also the health measures abroad and in, in, in the country's destinations. No? Uruguay is working a lot of, of that. Uh, also because Uruguay is a, is a country that uh, once uh, every time the 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 the, tra the free trade the, the the free international trade and uh, uh, open the countries and the markets the 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 so as far as possible uh, without any additional obstacles and maybe also maybe also uh, COVID could be an excuse for. Uh, put additional uh, obstacles, you know? Let's, let's hope not, and let's hope uh, everything goes back to normal before this year ends. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, the next question... And, uh, Professor, let me tell you one, one last thing. For Uruguay, it was even difficult uh, uh, this period of time because coronavirus arrives uh, arrived 
uh, 15 days after one government, one new government took the power in Uruguay. Mm -hmm. And uh, com coming also from the left to the right, uh, politically speaking. So it was very hard for the new government that have a, 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 a new agenda for the political affairs uh, of the country, change this agenda and program it or adapt this agenda and, 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 and actions that they already planned uh, with uh, 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 this very huge and very hard crisis. A very hard job. Uh, the next question would be about the trade volume between Uruguay and Turkey, the principal goods traded, and how were the exports and imports between our two countries were affected during this uh, pandemic period? Okay, uh, we have a very we have a very great and not bad uh, uh, exchange. We have, uh, uh, Uruguay and Turkey have a, a very good friendly uh, relation with many, many agreements signed and many projects to be signed that give the, to the relation a very good framework to work together and, and a very good security that is good for both countries. Uh, as, as, as you know, the consulate is uh, the single diplomatic mission uh, this consulate is the single diplomatic mission uh, in Turkey, and Turkey has now uh, a consul, an honorary consul in uh, Montevideo, and uh, its diplomatic uh, representation is in Buenos Aires. But but we we have received the the, the very very welcome notice that Turkey will open uh, its embassy in Montevideo very soon. The end of this year. So, uh, in this regard, I, 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 have, I have to say that I, I am very happy to find uh, this welcome and open wishes uh, of Turkey to work together for improving this relationship, uh, for, for increasing the, the bilateral relations. I really hope my six, uh, my five, six years of mission here help a lot uh, to, to, this, uh, to this object, because it's not only my duty, but it's uh, my personal uh, purpose. Uh, so let me re repeat once again that uh, uh, I have to thanks for the welcome I received here for the different Turkish authorities that I have the opportunity to be in contact since. Turkish authorities or international trade agencies or, uh, and commercial uh, organizations like Musia, Lege, Tusia, the Chamber of Commerce of uh, Istanbul, that is a huge, huge one. The Chamber of Commerce of Izmir, in which uh, uh, we have the opportunity to meet together. Uh, exactly, we had met in Izmir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very, very incredible, incredible time together there. And, um, we, we, we all try, we, all these organizations try to take advantage even uh, of this time, this difficult time to sit down and analyze serious, seriously, what, what can we do together? What can uh, Turkey offer to Uruguay and Uruguay can offer to, to, to Turkey uh, and uh, have clear the need the needs of Turkey and Uruguay uh, and create the initiatives and the actions to facilitate business. Uh, very important also, let me tell you, the, negoci the negotiations that uh, uh, are leading Uruguay nowadays with Turkish airlines uh, to make possible to activate one uh, flight connection between uh, Istanbul and Montevideo. Uh, so, this could be very good for our exchange and our business. The trade volume, going to the trade volume, uh, volume uh, between Uruguay and Turkey is not bad, could be better, uh, but uh, Turkey occupies the uh, five position as a destination of our livestock uh, exportation with uh, more or less 400, uh, four, four, 400,000 uh, animals in 2018. 
So it's very good. And also we export to Turkey soy, wool, rice, cellulose, and Turkey export to Uruguay, uh, mostly automatic uh, household machinery, industrial products. More or less, this is the picture. We already have identified identify, uh, other areas for increasing our bilateral exchange. Uh, from the perspective of Uruguay, the most poten potential areas may be could be dairy products, uh, frozen meat, uh, malt, soy, pharmaceutical services also. And for Turkish, I, I think cloth and uh, household machineries have uh, great possibilities in Uruguay. Uh, finally, for, for, for ending the question, uh, the pandemic, I can say, didn't affect too much the exchange, the bilateral exchange and the flow of our bilateral commerce. Since the moment, uh, big exportation of livestock was able to come here in the beginning of the, of the pandemic. So, so far so good and no complaints uh, about uh, this, this issue. Mr. Consul General, dear Diego, it was a pleasure uh, coming together with you in this webinar, but uh, before ending up, I'm going to ask you for a favor. We had a technical difficulty, as my uh, colleagues here just informed me, and uh, the question I had formulated about the cultural aspects of your country. You remember, uh, we, we talked about tango, we talked about football, we talked about, you told us, you gave us some information about this asado, which yes. is Uruguay asado, as far as I understand. <laughs> that part was not uh, clearly heard. There was a technical difficulty. So could you please end up uh, our session uh, once more giving us some information about daily life and the reflection of those principal cultural aspects to the daily life in your country? So I, I was talking about... Uh, the identity of uh, Uruguayan culture uh, that has uh, many different uh, corners, many different uh, uh, elements. One of them is uh, tango, as a famous, famous and very well-known uh, music and dance uh, practice uh, that everyone, I think, in the world nowadays uh, know more or less tango. The other is football, that football is not, a, 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 it's not only a, a game, it's not only a sport, but it's, it's also part of our culture and part of our identity and part of our uh, quotidianity as a, a family and social uh, quotidianity. And of course the asado, the asado is also part of our identity because uh, being uh, an agricultural uh, country that produced the, the, the high level, the most high level uh, meat uh, around the world, we used to take uh, meat, we used to do this uh, barbecue, not every day, but at least once or twice uh, in a week. And uh, this is a very good also uh, uh, time for spending and sharing time with our families and friends, uh, assisting or watching one uh, uh, football game in the TV, uh, or going after the asado, going directly to the, to the stadium. So tango, asado, uh, carnival, mate, there are more or less uh, the main distinctive cultural aspect that I, I, can, I can give you uh, today to you to have more or less the idea uh, of our culture that, as I said before, is a, uh, is, a, is a result of many contributions from many countries and civilizations, not only European, from the European uh, migra immigration, but also from the African immigration, that this part of our history is not very well known uh, in the world. So it's, it's very good to, 
to, to give to you also this information that uh, we have even the uh, very important uh, immigration from Africa. Thank you very much, Mr. Consul General. It was an honor for us to have you here participating in our webinar session. Uh, our best wishes and greetings for Uruguay. Aha, professor, as I said before, be sure that the pleasure is all mine. Uh, this was a very, very good opportunity to share with you and the audience uh, things uh, about my country. There are so many things I, 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 I think uh, Turkey and uh, Uruguay can, can do together with all your help and the help of all the organizations I have been in contact uh, with. Uh, I will be here uh, every day in my, in my desk to do all the possible uh, I can do for increasing these bilateral relations. Thanks again to you, to you, Professor, and for the, to the University of Ankara for hosting and organize this uh, extraordinary and valuable webinar. Thanks also to the colleagues and ambassadors and consul generals with whom I have the great honor to share this floor. And uh, uh, finally, for, 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 for giving you uh, one last idea, uh, I celebrate this initiative because it proves that even in difficult uh, times, uh, we as a human, as a human being, are able and can always find a way to fight against uh, any hard circumstances and try to create productive and positive things to. Uh, to make this world better and better every day. Yes. Uh, and uh, the consulate of Istanbul and myself will be open to receive any question, any, any need for further information about our country, and, uh, anything you may, you may need. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.